Hi guys, Irina here and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. Today I want to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I've been using this phone since the launch and there are actually just a few months left before we'll see the new iPhone lineup and that's actually kind of crazy. Time flies. So I want to share my experience with this phone and I hope this video will help you clear some doubts if you're thinking about getting the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So let's begin. Just a few words about the design and the dimensions of this phone. I got my 13 Pro Max in silver and I absolutely love this finish. I have a little theory when it comes to picking the color of your new phone. I've noticed that the more neutral colors are better in the long term. Before I tried experimenting with different colors, but I remember how much I loved my 11 Pro Max in midnight green when I just got it and how I couldn't stand it by the end of the year. It seemed like the worst color ever to me and I just couldn't wait to get rid of that phone. Also, some of my friends said the same thing about the iPhone 12 Pro Max in Pacific Blue. They loved that blue color in the beginning, but then it just got kind of annoying. Let me know if it's ever happened to you guys. But don't get me wrong, of course you could choose whatever finish you want. They're all all beautiful and the purchase of a new iPhone must be 100% satisfying for you. But if you know that you're gonna use this phone for a few years, maybe just keep this little detail in mind. Also, if you decide to sell your iPhone at some point, usually the phones in more neutral colors are easier to sell. When it comes to dimensions, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is not a small phone. It has a 6.7 inch display and traditionally the shape of this iPhone is not slim. I think out of all the phones I've held in my hand, iPhones are always the widest phones. And honestly, I wish the 13 Pro Max was slimmer because I have to admit this phone is bulky, especially when you put a case on it. I spend a lot of time on my phone when I edit videos for Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts, so the large display of the 13 Pro Max is definitely an advantage. And if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you know that I've never been a fan of small phones, I would always prefer the phone with a larger display, but for some reason lately I've started feeling so different about it, I suddenly got so sick of bulky phones, so for the first time I'm seriously thinking about getting the iPhone 14 Pro and not the Pro Max at the end of this year. However, speaking of the display on the 13 Pro Max, I don't have any complaints about it. This display is very bright. Even when I'm using this phone outdoors, the viewing experience is still pretty good. The 13 Pro Max is definitely one of the best phones on the market when it comes to brightness. And in case you're wondering, it's noticeably brighter than the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Speaking of the color accuracy, iPhones have always been pretty good in this department, so I can't really complain. And let's talk about the ProMotion feature that was finally added to the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. So basically, the display on this phone has a 120 Hz refresh rate instead of 60 Hz. And if you're wondering about the difference, it's pretty dramatic. Of course, when you're always on your 30 Pro Max, you kind of take it for granted and completely forget about it. But when I occasionally take my iPhone 13, if I need an auxiliary phone to take a video or something, during the first seconds with this phone, I feel like there is something wrong with it, because everything is so jittery. And then I realize that everything is fine with this phone, it's just 60 Hz. So the biggest takeaway is that when you're using your phone, you get used to it, whether it's 60 Hz or 120 Hz. So if you own an older iPhone model with 60 Hz, I'm pretty sure you have no problem with it at all. But if you ask me, the difference between an iPhone with a 60 Hz refresh rate and 120 Hz is quite dramatic. All the swipes are just buttery smooth on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, giving you that feeling of a more expensive and high quality product. Moving on to the battery department and let's talk about the battery life. 
But first, let me check the battery health on this phone. Well, it's 100%, which is great for almost a year. So when it comes to battery life, the 13 Pro Max is really good. Usually I charge it every other day with moderate use, but even with heavy use, this phone is still able to last me through the day. I would say the battery life on this phone is actually pretty hard to drain. I always feel very confident and calm about the battery life of this phone when I'm traveling so yeah, the battery life on the 13 Pro Max is definitely one of its main advantages. When it comes to charging options, of course, the iPhone 13 Pro Max supports wireless charging and MagSafe. There are a lot of charging MagSafe accessories on the market, not only from Apple, but also from the other brands. Speaking of this, Apple MagSafe charger, honestly, I don't really use it because it's kind of slow. And 99% of the time, I prefer the old fashioned way with the cable and the adapter. I've been using this 20 watt charger and and usually it takes about one hour and 40 minutes to fully charge this phone from 0% to 100. Since I kind of touched the accessories topic, let me share with you some of my favorite accessories I've been using with my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And the first item I want to mention is this Pop Grip for MagSafe by Pop Sockets. It's not sponsored. I bought this thing a few months ago, and in the beginning, I was kind of skeptical if it would be useful for me. But this thing grew on me, and now I just can't imagine my life without it. Before before this one, I didn't like the pop sockets because I didn't like the fact that it would be stuck on my case until I removed it permanently. But this one is MagSafe, so you could attach it whenever you want and easily detach it if you don't need it. The magnet is very strong, so you shouldn't be worried about dropping your phone. Well, so far it's been just perfect. When it comes to cases, I'm personally in love with this Apple case in the eucalyptus color. I would say it looks like a combination of green and blue. Very beautiful. Before this one, I had the same Apple case, but in chalk pink. It looked nice for a week or so, and then I went on vacation, used some sunscreen, and the case got hideous yellow stains on it. That would never come off. So it was a complete waste of money. And another case that I absolutely love to use with my 13 Pro Max is this circuit board case by CB Art. I absolutely love the design. This case looks gorgeous. Next, let's talk about the camera of this phone. I have a comprehensive camera comparison video featuring the iPhone 13 Pro Max, so check it out if you want to see for yourself how this phone compares to its predecessors. But overall, the camera on this phone is one of the most reliable I've ever tried. Speaking of the new camera features on the 13 Pro Max, which are absent on its predecessors, let's start with the cinematic mode. Honestly, I don't like it because it's not reliable, it often blurs the objects that are not supposed to be blurred, and in general such videos look kind of fake and you could always tell that it was not filmed with a professional camera, so personally I don't really see the point of using it. Speaking of the photographic styles, I think it's pretty cool and lets you be more creative and maybe sometimes take better photos in terms of colors, but I could never make myself use it because honestly I'm just too lazy to go through the styles and find the perfect one before I finally take a shot, so I always just use the default photo mode. Macro mode is something that I absolutely love and always use for taking macro shots. My personal recommendation is to enable the macro control in the camera settings so that you would always be able to disable the macro mode when you don't need it. Because sometimes when I want to take a close-up video, the camera automatically starts switching to the macro mode and the video gets jittery and the quality gets so much worse right away. So sometimes it's better to keep it disabled disabled, but yeah, in general, it's a very useful camera feature and I love it. 
Oh, I almost forgot about the ProRes feature. And no, I don't use it because it takes up a ridiculous amount of storage space. I know that some people use it and love it, but I personally don't really see the reason to use it. So, speaking of the new camera features on the 13 Pro Max, it looks like only the macro mode turned out to be useful, while all the rest seems more like a gimmick to me. Moving on, and one of my favorite things about this phone I want to mention is the speakers. These speakers are not just loud, but also amazing in terms of sound quality. When I'm listening to music, I usually prefer connecting my phone to one of my external Bluetooth speakers because I love the rich sound and bass, but sometimes I'm okay with listening to music right on my phone because the sound is really good. When it comes to overall performance, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is very capable. You can do pretty much anything on this phone. It's very zippy and fast. So far, I don't think I have experienced any glitches and the phone hasn't really slowed down in the nine months that I've used it. The overall performance has been very smooth, so I can't really complain here. I want to talk a little about the storage options and I know that when it comes to buying a new phone, there are always a lot of questions about which storage option you should go for. And of course, it's very personal and depends on your lifestyle and how you use your phone. For example, I have this little weird tendency to transfer all of my photos and videos from my phone to my computer on a regular basis, so if you're someone like me, this 128GB version would be totally fine for you. If not, I would definitely recommend you going for at least 256GB version, because I've noticed that even if you're not heavy on using your camera, which I guess would be quite rare these days, all this bloatware from all all the apps you have and will eventually download on your phone seems to be taking up more and more storage space every year. So I feel like the capacity section is something people always want to save money on and frankly, I'm usually one of those people. But think twice, especially if you're gonna use this phone for at least two to three years. That's all for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.